Hey CFS Warriors, it's Victoria here and I just wanted to talk to you tonight about setbacks and crashes. You know, I used to feel like I lived in the twilight zone of a crash and a setback and they could last anywhere from two weeks to months for me where my days were just spent entirely in bed or just revolved about around when I could get into bed. So, you know, if you've ever felt like that, because CFS is basically made up of setbacks and crashes, I just want to share with you some things that have really helped me on the recovery path to minimize those crashes and where they became more of a dips that might last either an afternoon and evening in bed or a little extra rest on the weekend or just pulling back on my activity for a few days to just get through. So it's really amazing what a difference we can actually make in our setbacks and crashes. So first of all, the thing that really helped me was realizing as the CFS Health Program and the Optimum Health Clinic underscore is recovery is not a straight line. And when I finally accepted this, it really helped me because uh, you know, it really calmed down that stress response to the crash. And, you know, even the Apollo rockets to the moon, their journey was 90% of the time off course. And so they had a feedback mechanism that helped them course correct. And that's kind of like our journey. You may be off course much of the time, but as long as you're listening to your body, listening to that feedback mechanism that you've been given, you'll be able to course correct and actually reach your destination. Second thing that really helped me was leaning into the crash. Again, embracing the place that I was. You know, Tony Robbins talks about if there's something you have to do and you really don't want to do it, find a way that you can actually enjoy the process. And that sounds kind of crazy when you think about it in regards to a crash, but I began to do that and think, how can I gently care for myself through this? So I'll share with you a few things that I did at the end of this video that really helped me with that. The third thing was for me to just recognize that when I was in a crash, I was gonna have an emotional bomb out as well. And so there might be tears, and when I realize that, and like when I find myself just a mess and tattered emotionally, I'd go, oh yeah, I'm in a crash. And recognize that was just part of the process, it really helped me cope immensely. So that was really important, just to let my emotions be, because I, as I rested my body back into a healing state, my emotions would follow suit. So the fourth thing is to rest, don't stress. You know, so often I would lie in bed all day, but my mind would be going 90 to nothing, or I'd be all stressed out about, am I ever gonna recover? Or how long is this crash gonna last? Not to mention all the other things in my life that I could stress about. But you know, that doesn't do any good for our uh, recovery process. And basically our bodies, you know, the, the World Health Organization classifies this as a neurological illness, which means our bodies are in that fight and flight state. So we really need to calm that down. And as I learn to do that and get my body into a healing state during a crash, maybe using guided meditations or EFT, uh, alternate nose breathing techniques, um, self-hypnosis, all of that helped me calm down that stress response so that my body could get into a healing state and move through that crash more quickly. The fifth thing was to let go of the achiever beast. You know, I was on a mission. After four years of the push and crash cycle, I started the recovery path in my you know, at the end of the fourth year of this illness, and it took me a year to work from a three minute walk to a 10 minute walk. And I tell you what, when I had crashed during that time, it just frustrated me so much because I knew I'd have to start back from the beginning. I might have finally reached a seven minute walk, and it would mean I'd have to start back at a three minute walk. But you know what? I did it, and I did it many, many times. And as my recovery progressed, as I went forward, I gained ground more quickly after the setbacks and crashes. So it really is okay. You don't have to do all those things that you think you need to do for your recovery during a crash. You just need to let go and rest. So basically, if there's anything else stressing you that you feel like you need to do, get it off the plate, delegate it so you can just spend that time recovering. But you just gotta let it go. You know, you just gotta take that time to recover. So the sixth thing that really helped me was, as the Optimum Health Clinic calls, a first aid kit. 
and I had a list that I kept on my phone because you know when brain when when you hit a crash brain fog sets in and it gets really hard to remember what you need to do to help yourself through recovery so I'll just go over some of those things that I've written down on a list for one, I would always order in Greek land chops and a salad because I really needed a high protein hit whenever I went into a crash. So I would eat as much protein as I could. Um, the other things I would do, would I would watch a TV series, something light, no heavy violence or drama because I just needed to have something light to help me float through back to recovery. Um, a fun book would be good to, to read, but you know what? Sometimes I'd pick up children's books, something like The Chronicles of Narnia or Harry Potter, because the reading is light, lighter and easier, and it's not dark. So those were really good things for me to read in a crash. Play with my cat. I like to journal or draw in an adult coloring book. EFT videos with Brad Yates. He was my favorite, so I would do that. YouTube guided meditations for deep relaxation, listen to music, stretch. These are all things that I could do from bed. I would also watch online recovery modules from the programs that I would be in, and that always encouraged me. And of course, you can find free ones on YouTube. You can check out my channel, something to encourage you when you're in bed with a crash. Aromatherapy, talk to a friend if I was feeling really emotional. The challenge with that is often it was my throat that was also impacted, made it hard to talk. But you know, sometimes I had to just bypass that and talk with a friend to work through things. That's important if you can do it during a crash. Um, also have someone make me a fresh juice, watch travel shows and dream about the future. And I used to love to watch uh, windsurfing DVDs because uh, it would give me hope that someday I would be back on the ocean. And I was able to get back to windsurfing. So anyway, those were things that helped me. And again, I had on my list to ask myself, is there anything I need to do that's stressing me and get that off the plate? So those are the things that helped me in my journey. I'm still in recovery, but like I said, minimizing those crashes and setbacks is just so wonderful when you can get farther down the road and life begins to open up again. So, you know, obviously other things are important, nutrition and movement and all of that. Um, <clears throat> if you've done any brain retraining programs, that really helps in a crash. And what I found is not trying to get more energy with it, but to do it on calm and deep rest have really been beneficial. So I hope that helps you as you're working through recovery. You know, people without CFS just could never understand the depth and the darkness of those setbacks and crashes. But so I just want to encourage you that you can begin to take actions to minimize the duration of them and the depth of them so that you don't crash so deeply and the time starts to get less and less as you go along. So be encouraged, warriors. Even though it doesn't feel like it sometimes, life is not over. It's starting again.